yourself a clap. <laughs> That's my job. Okay. That's all I can do right now. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to Tucson and Tanduri. Uh, today we have a really different episode. We got wine tasting because we have our friend here, Philip Biele. He's a regional wine maker or producer. And uh, we have some really interesting wines to show us uh, for a tasting. And so this time we adjusted the recipe to, to fit that instead of the typical tacos or other things we've been doing. Um, so it's going to be, what, what's the recipe for today, Matthew? Um, I'm doing a coco wine. Um, coco what? Coco wine. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's a French dish, but uh, because, because of you, Fabio, and your wine, and you are from um, France, yeah? which is the metropole region yeah. of uh, where we are. And so I said, okay, I'm going to cook it with the wine, right? They call it the Falsische Coco Wine, mm -hmm. which is using the white wine. For, for the viewers, Rhineland Pfalz, Pfalz is a region or a state in, uh, in the south of Germany. Well, in German, you say Pfalz, so he's going to be saying that quite a bit. Yeah. So in English, they said Platinet. Platinate. 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 Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but um, most people already know it as Pfalz. Yeah. Um, Pfalz already established as a brand. We're located quite in the southwest of Germany, right next to the French border. Yeah. And um, Pfalz is around the corner. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. around the corner. And, you know, I mean, I'm not such a big wine expert. Okay? I love to drink it more <laughs> than I Yeah, but that, that's what but, counts. Yeah. Right? But I find it like, you know, from all the, from especially in Germany, all the wines that I've been tasting, false wine, it's, it's the best for me, right? It's the best wine now. Well, yeah, I must say, uh, we, we worked hard on that. Mm -hmm. um, my generation, the generation before us, um, long time false wine was like, yeah, yeah, the cheap stuff, they, they yeah. sell to the, to the idiots. Huh? But uh, we didn't like that, that image, so we worked hard, we improved the quality of the wines, we improved our marketing, we worked on our, on our designs, um, you will see it on the labels later. Yeah, we, we worked hard and now we're actually on top of, of Germany, what selling wine goes on. Huh? I mean, you're also in a, in a privileged part of Germany, I, I've heard, right, that it's yeah. like a special elevation and where you get the most sun yeah we have we have with um the most southbound wine region in germany yeah. we have the best weather and it's because of the rhine right. we have the the mountains on the one side yeah. the felserwald not mm -hmm. and the rhine on the other and we have there's uh the winds going across and they build like like a greenhouse where the air stays in and the sun warms it up mm -hmm. and so we have much higher average temperatures than the other regions. So this is also why you only can grow wine on the rivers in Germany. Mm -hmm. you, uh, if you look at yeah. France or Spain, yeah. there's wine everywhere. everywhere. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, but in Germany, you only can grow in a narrow yeah. part around yeah. the rivers where, oh. where the weather is like good. Where Mosel, yeah, Mosel exactly. Yeah. Good. Cool facts of today. <laughs> and tequila time. Tequila time. Tequila time. Tequila time. Tequila time. Ah, we're ready to work. Oh, it's nice and warm now. <laughs> okay, we, we start the cooking. Uh, for the coco worm, I add a bit of tandoori, a bit in there, yeah? some masala, you know, this some is Asian thing. Tandoori. I marinate it with turmeric and uh, cinnamon powder. I'm gonna add a bit of um, uh, mustard seeds and uh, um, muscat. Nutmeg. Nutmeg. Nutmeg, Nutmeg. Nutmeg. Ah, yes. Nutmeg. So that's for the marination, for the cooking. Did and then we this? need mushroom. Grapes, wine grapes, onion, garlic, cream, zana, cream fresh, double, double cream, and a butter, clarified butter. Clarified. Clarified. Uh, then I'll start. All right. So good amount of butter. Good amount of butter. What did you choose for us, Phil? So I brought some classic Feltz of Riesling, as everyone knows. And this is a 2019. Um, and what's, uh, what's special about it for this dish? Or? So it's it's from a hometown. It's from Altdorf. It's straight classic Pelzer Riesling. Very very dry. A lot of acidity. As as you know it, as you love it. It's one of our best sellers. All right. So this we're gonna throw into the chicken. Oh. And I guess that acidity will. 
Oh yeah. Will come out. Yeah. yeah. I would like to try it too, man. Yeah. What's up with it? Sorry, he's got you. He looked at me and like, hey. <laughs> onion and garlic in there. And then I'm gonna add a bit of mustard seed. Like that, uncrushed. That's normal? That, no, this is my addition. It's not in the, in the Falzi show, uh, Coco Bar. I see. Yes, sir. Yeah. So the, my addition is the turmeric and mustard seed and the nutmeg which I've, I find it, it goes well together with uh, the cream, the mm -hmm. cream fresh, uh, and, and the wine. I mean, I tried it a few yeah. times, and because it's not so overpowering, yeah. it doesn't kill all the, the subtle uh, taste of yeah, the wine. So you make quite a fusion out of it, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fra France, Germany, and then your own uh, ideas. It's, Malaysia. Not, it's not Coco, Coco Wan, it's, it's Coco Wan. Coco. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Coco, huh? <laughs> Co no, Coco La. Malaysian, you know, Coco you la? use a lot of La. Coco Wan La. Coco Wan La. <laughs> <laughs> you use a lot of La. That's really good La. And once um, the mustard seeds popping, we can add the chicken. Beer lamb, yeah. Beer yeah. 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 cooking as well. Yeah, I brought, I brought something uh, today. Oh. It's scallops with a saffron sauce. Mm -hmm. It's a classic recipe. It's got a special touch made from my dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we start out with basic soup vegetables like uh, leek, mm -hmm. carrot, onion. Uh, we have some fennel. 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 Fennel, yeah. yeah. So I just prepared the charlotte. So not too fine. I mean, now I need the wine for yeah. my cocoa, right? So I'll use your yeah, Riesling. And the labels, we got six different labels mm -hmm. made by an actual local artist from Rouen. Also a little small town in, in the park. And my grandpa won them in a, a game of cards. Oh, wow. So okay. they were sitting in a restaurant playing cards okay. and the artist didn't have any money left so he put up some, some sketches of it. And you like it? Yeah, my, my grandpa won six of them. Um, One glass. He died, I think, three, four years ago. Um, uh, we got to his sister, who owns all the rights, and she gave us the permission to use them for our labels. Oh, really? Also, I like the touch of the paper. Right, it gives it this. It's, uh, uh, it's a cotton paper, it's not oh, a normal wow. paper. Okay. Gives this nice texture and like yeah. that matte feeling. Yeah, I really like the labels that it tells you the information up front and clear. Yeah. So, I got the chocolate cut, now we have some celery. So what Phil told me is this, this recipe is, is very precise and in terms of quantity. So we can probably put that down in the comments. It feels all right with yeah, revealing sure. his, his dad's secrets. Good thing my dad doesn't, doesn't know how to use a computer, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so let's keep it as a secret. <laughs> Just between us all people. So now we have some leash. I think there's also half of it going to do it. Cut it in quarts. Slice it a little bit finer. That will be do just fine. So in the, in the meantime, yes. maybe, maybe we can try the next wine. Oh yeah, totally. So I also brought something sparkling. If you like Tim, rosé. Uh, it's rosé seco. Um, actually. Uh, most people know it as Prosecco, but Prosecco is a, is a trademark and you can't use it outside of, of Italy, so it's just Seco. Uh -huh. But it's the same procedure, you take wine, you make it ready, and then you put some, some CO2 in it to make it sparkling. Uh, okay. So that's the difference also between, um, between Z, sparkling wine and Seco. Sparkling wine has um, the CO2 from its own fermentation, with just the CO2 put in it. Mm -hmm. Is without uh, the metal cage around it. Ah, okay. Because, fun story, um, if there's a metal cage around it, mm -hmm. you have to pay a tax from one euro per bottle. But just if the. Just because it looks around. fancier or what? No, because uh, in, I think, 1912, the, the German Kaiser needed money for his fleet. So he put up a tax for sparkling wine. And the rule is if there's a metal cage, uh, I got. Yeah. On it, you have to pay the tax. Yeah. If not, you don't. Yeah. Well, Phil has a website, and we can put his information. Where his winery is at? So well, we have a we have a quite nice website where you can get information about us, about the winery. We also have a small little guest house which my granny runs. All family run, very quaint um, place. Yeah. And actually, there's a sale out at the moment for like tasting packages. We got two different white tasting packages and two different red tasting packages. 
for a discount and free shipping. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to take out the chickens out first, and then the cream, so uh, the cream yeah. fresh, and um, uh, and the zana is gonna come in. Wow, I'm not wondering. I start with the preparation of the sauce. We take some wine. I will take Lena Weisswein cuvee. Uh, we're gonna mix of Riesling, Müller Thurgau, and a bit of Gewürztraminer. Then put some, put up some vegetables, put everything in. So we're just gonna put it on. Let it sit there the green. and cook. Right. Uh, now we go over to the scallops. Mm -hmm. um, I brought some. We're gonna put them in some flour. I prepared that at home. Um, there's some lemon tumion, there is some pepper, some salt. Uh, we got some Liebstöcke. I don't, I don't know the English Lieb name. Is that herb in the maize, huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. we'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so then you just take the scallops, put them in the flour and roll them. Apparently it's called lavage. Lavage. A uh, herb that has... Uh, yeah, Liebstöckel. Celery, lavage. parsley, fennel, tastes all in one. Ah, okay. So here it gets a bit tricky. Uh, we're gonna use some clarified butter first. Huh? That's good. So it's clarified or purified? What's the... Oh, well, this is it. I think you can you can use the same word, but uh, purified sounds like it came out of the lab. Right. <laughs> you take a sheet of baking paper, paper, put it in the pan so it sticks with a with a pan, and put some of the butter on the baking paper. Or did they still get? Fried and a bit seared. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, like right, in a normal it's... pan, but without the sticking. <laughs> Magic. Magic. You guys want to try the leather? Yes, right. please. <laughs> yeah, you already did. We know that. Yeah. For sure. well, <laughs> me too. But I, I secretly, me too, already had a little taste. Yes, Leonard. Yes, Leonard. Hey guys, welcome to my life. Everyone else drinks before me of my own stuff. <laughs> Starting to hit now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now with, I think we're at the point. Yeah, perfect. You see, it's just a bit brown, and because of the baking paper, all the flour that's brown sticks on the scallops. It's not in the pan, right? And not in the pan. Also, it's way easier to clean afterwards. True. Let's yeah. sit it on the side, and all the heat from the pan is gone. Yeah. It's not. It's not gonna sear after. Yeah. Like you have normal, normally you have a hot pan. It's just gonna spread the heat. You take out the paper. You put it on a cold surface. It's done. Nice. The but sauce is done. Put it over. Yeah, I just want the juice to get the, all the pieces out. Whiny soup. <laughs> oh, whiny, 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 hello, hello, no? whiny, whiny, tiny, whiny. Yeah, but <laughs> this is the reduction of the wine. So in the meantime, for the cocoa sauce, I'm gonna add, yeah, cocoa la, yeah. 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 the cream, the zana. It's about like 100 gram of each. Let's see. Yummy. What's our next wine? Yeah. <laughs> Good that you are. Thank you for reminding. <laughs> so, next wine is the last white wine. Uh, it's Scheurebe, also classical German. Uh, it's fruity, it's tasty, um, it has a low acidity, uh, it's se semi sweet. Semi-sweet. Okay. Semi-sweet, yes. And yeah, let's, for let's sweet, try sweet it. Lovers. I think the taste speaks for itself. Oh. Also, Eric, if you're tasting wine, put the nose really oh. deep in the glass because you want to smell the wine and not the surroundings. Mm -hmm. And you already can smell the spicy flavor of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And also when, especially when the wine taster, they when they're drinking yeah. it, they will do the slurping, right? That, yeah. So that it heats all the taste buds. Yeah, and also um, you get air into the wine. That's okay. also the reason why you normally shake the wine. Mm -hmm. So you air the wine, so the arum with the air gets to your taste bud and you get a better taste of the wine. That's why you slurp the wine. So and if you smell it, you take a zip, move it around your mouth, so you get all the other tastes out of the mouth, and then smell it again. And you will recognize the smell gets a lot stronger. Yeah. Very because nice. it isn't influenced from the from the other arums in your mouth. Yeah. I do get that the like the mandarin you said? Yeah, yeah. the mandarin. That's very present. Mm -hmm. When you say there is mandarin, you smell and yeah. taste mandarin, yeah. um, uh, yeah. uh, mango and all that, are you adding? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, that, that's a question I get asked a lot. Yeah. And no, we do not add any uh, anything else instead of grape juice. It's just 100% pure grape juice. Uh, the arums come from the fermentation, from the yeast. Okay. Before 100 years, nobody knew how fermentation really worked. In the yeah. beginning of the, of the 20th century, they discovered yeast and how yeasts work. Before yes. that, it was just magic for thousands of years. Yeah. You just put there some fruits, mash them, and it gets alcohol out of it, or bread. Yeah. So that, there's this old saying which says, um, the baker is the best brewer. Okay. On, a, on stuff humans are doing for thousand years, Nobody knew how it works, it was just magic. Okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <coughs> What's going on here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm gonna start, start finishing the sauce. <laughs> start finishing the sauce. <laughs> we put you, you the reduction back in the pot. Then we add some, some uh, creme fraiche, or a creme double. About two spoonfuls, well, maybe a bit more. Then we stir it up. Stir it up. Oh, darling, still yeah, well, we can swap. Let's change it up. Pop, pop, pop. Yeah. Now they come some pepper. Limon. Some saffron, not much, yeah. just mm -hmm. a few of it. So who's the chef in your, in your <laughs> kitchen normally? Yeah. Normally, um, if we're cooking professionally, the mom's cooking. Okay. And if we're cooking for us in private, uh, actually my dad cooks. Okay. He, the only time he's not in the way, I well. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. He picked up cooking like uh, 10 years ago on a cooking course my mom gave him on his birthday. Yummy! Yeah. Let's What's try it? it. Let's try it, right? <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna do this, let's taste it. I'm gonna grab this one, I love the golden color of this one. Nice. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, the scallops <clears throat> are perfect. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm almost done. This is cooking. You already have the appetizer. Delish. And we can move to the next wine. <laughs> so let's start. <laughs> well, no, two no, numbers already. Table 30. That's the table on our restaurant we have where all our regulars were sitting on that. Eh? And we brought a bottle of it to say, yep, yeah, just try it. We put up something new, try it, say what you think. And they ended up drinking like five or six of it. <laughs> so, and we didn't have a name for it till that moment. And then we together decided we're gonna name it like Table 30. Okay. Table 13 gets, gets pretty rowdy. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 You see, oh, you, have nice. the, you have the red taste, and it's also two classic Pfälzer Rebsorten. It's Dornfelder Spätburgunder, Pinot Noir, mixed together, mm -hmm. and um, a big shot of grape juice. 
so it gets this sweet taste. For everybody who's asking, we don't use sugar or anything to sweeten the wine. We just take grape juice, juice, conserve it, mm -hmm. and just put it back in afterwards at the amount that we think it needs. That also varies on how the wine comes out in that year. Sometimes we taste the same wine 10, 12 times with different amounts of other wines in it, with different amounts of grape juice, till we get that sweet spot where it's exactly right. When you added the juice, how do you avoid the microbes from eating the rest <coughs> at that point? Then um, we filtrate the wine and at uh, such a small level filtration that all microorganisms are going to get blocked. Also, the, the bottle cap can leak, the, the core can, can get bad and stuff. And we, that's why we don't guarantee that the wine is 100% good. Mm -hmm. If you come to us and say, okay, this wine is a cork smell, yeah. or this wine is, is bad, there's no point and we're gonna change it. But if you come after 10 years and say, oh, mm. That's a good uh, point. What the, what's uh, the deal with the cork here and not cork here? Um, exactly. Now they're using plastic corks, yeah. they're using uh, caps, uh, <laughs> because uh, from, the, uh, from the cork, uh, yeah, I've been hearing lots of stories yeah. about it. No? I mean, they were so, saying like, because the corks can get bad, and, uh, There's also a question that comes up a lot, yeah. And the traditional bottle closure is a cork. Yeah, And it exactly. was for thousands of years because yeah. it's just a piece of wood you put in and it's done. Um, the problem with the cork was we had... <laughs> He's done. God. He's done. No, no, let's have a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's back, come back to the corks again, yeah. Yeah, so that's also a misconception. A natural cork is more airtight than a screw cap. Mm -hmm. Because the, the ceiling surface of a cork, which you put, put in the neck, is way bigger than just the brim on the bottle, which is closed by this, just this clothing surface. So there it gets more air in than in a good cork. Yeah. So and there were other solutions they thought about it. Glass closures, which you yeah, already have seen some. But glass. the point with them is they're just hugely expensive yeah. and they also just seal with a brim of plastic on the bottle. So it's nothing mm -hmm. else instead of an expensive screw cap. Yeah. So there's no end, end all be all solution. You no. I also still use corks in some of the very expensive red wines because cork is more durable than the metal cap because mm -hmm. the metal cap can oxidize, can rust away. Mm -hmm. So, and the cork, okay. if, you, if, you, if you have a good storage solution, if you just leave it on, the, on your shelf, the cork's gonna dry out, it's gonna get porous and the wine's gonna get bad. Mm -hmm. So it's always walking the line, it's deciding which closure goes on, on, on which bottle. Um, but the main advantage of closing a bottle with a screw cap is open your fridge, lay it in there and it doesn't leak. So between all the screwing and the carbs and the... Oh, <laughs> screwing and carbs and yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, <laughs> uh, nutmeg's coming in now. Also, fresh nutmeg is way better than out of the box because a lot of the oils get lost yeah, when right? you grind them up. Yeah. Super, super, super tender, tender, right? Yeah. The grapes fit perfectly. And I mean, you added a lot of uh, not nice. French traditional <laughs> spices, but it doesn't. It's not making it Asian still. I guess. No, no, no. It's still cocoa wa Yeah. 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 <laughs> For the people that may be thinking, oh, that it's gonna get ruined by by adding that? No, mm -hmm. not at all. Mm. The, the wine is 
Still present, still the, the star, right? Mm -hmm. So guys, it's been fantastic. This is the conclusion of our Coco Wala -la -la episode. Check out his winery. We're going to put everything down there. Subscribe if you like this uh, content, if it was inspiring for you. If you want to see more, uh, more recipes or anything, any ideas, leave it in the comments. And we'll see you next time. Let's begin! <laughs> Thank God this is Eric's kitchen and I don't have to clean up. <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. Oh, man. <laughs> fuck you too, man. I've been nice. doing all the cleaning. And no, you haven't. Congratulations, guys. He calls me to check if it's clean. Hey, you clean it. Did the girls come to clean it? Like, no. Yeah, I don't want to do the fucking cleaning, right? Yeah. Cheers. Congratulations. Well Cheers, guys.